Hello again guys and uh, in this episode I like to show you my I think most important commands in the menu what you can find in Photoshop. So this is the topic of this episode an overview about the menu in Photoshop. Enjoy. All right guys in this episode we are talking about the menu what you can see here on top. I like to give you an overview what I use very often and uh, maybe what is a little bit important in uh, retouching as a photographer or as a retoucher. All right, let's get started. So uh, it depends a little bit if you're working on Mac or PC, because um, then uh, I think in, on Mac it's right here on the Photoshop, the preferences, um, on PC maybe it's a little bit different. I do not like to talk about the preferences. This is something what we did in a previous video. I start with the file section. Right here, you can handle the file, you can open the file, you can close the file, and you can save the file. Um, two things what I, yeah, what I like is, uh, the first thing, if you click on File Open, maybe in older versions you can find Open As, and then you can click on the image, and you can see this image is a JPEG. But what you can do, and this is the reason why I use sometimes Photoshop, or file open you can change the format here to camera raw and then the jpeg file think he's a raw file it's not but uh, this is what happened if you click on open you can open any jpeg file in adobe camera raw but we are talking about photoshop so um, let's go uh, to the next uh, command and the next one is uh, save as um, I recommend, especially for the PC users, to save your images because sometimes your machine crashed. Now, it has nothing to do with PC or Mac, but this is something what I recommend um, to save your image all the time. I'm working with a Wacom tablet and I have my Express key where I have the shortcut right here, Command S. And every time when I did an interesting step in retouching, I press my Express key. You can do that um, with a shortcut here on your keyboard as well to save your image. Because it's absolutely horrible when you work a couple of minutes or hours on an image and then suddenly your computer crashed and this is not good. And before you waste time, um, make sure you save your image all the time. If you have the latest Photoshop version, you can find in your preferences. Now I have to take a look. I have to search maybe a little bit. Right here, you can click on that button on file handling. And then you can uh, say that Photoshop is saving your images every 5 minutes, 10 minutes. I don't know what's possible here. 15 minutes. This is a very nice, yeah, kind of a backup for your retouching. All right, uh, the next uh, part, what I use uh, sometimes is the scripts section right here. And I have some uh, scripts here inside. You can download different kind of scripts for Photoshop, but this is something for a little bit advanced uh, Photoshop users. So at the beginning, I recommend to know to uh, this open dialog, how to open a file in Photoshop and how to save a file in Photoshop. You can also save for web. I do not use that very often. Most of the time I make my image a little bit smaller and then I choose save as. All right, so the next section is the edit section. Right here, um, there are many, many tools and commands inside. The most important uh, tool or shortcut is for me here, the step backward shortcut. You can see shift command. Uh, oh, what's the what's the English spelling for Z? Is it Z? I don't know, but you can see it. And uh, this is a very interesting shortcut because every time when you did something wrong, let's say you don't like to have this, uh, it's much faster with shortcuts. And I have um, for this shortcut on my Wacom tablet uh, a separate Express key, so uh, I can uh, do that very fast or. When I'm working with a pen tool, sometimes it's not perfect, so I press the shortcut and this is very fast. But you can also, of course, click on the uh, menu here, but then you have to spend a little bit more time with it. Um, the next part is, um, what I use often uh, is the free transform tools. So let's say I have a duplicated layer here and I like to free transform it. 
and uh, this is the command T is the shortcut and if you click on that you can transform images if you press a shift key uh, everything stays in size and if you press shift and alt you can free transform it from the center so it's very cool we have much more tools inside we have also the puppet warp tool but it's very interesting maybe I will uh, do a separate video or tutorial about these tools content aware scale but the most important tool for me here or the most important command here is free transform and you can find here more transform tools rotate uh, perspective uh, transforming tools and much more this is why i use this edit uh, section or this edit command here um, very often the next one is image and right here I like to bring the focus a little bit to the command image size. This is uh, something what I use uh, all the time. Every time when I like to publish an image in the internet I bring down the size for my pictures in landscape mode. I choose most of the time 900 or 1000 pixels and for my portrait mode images 600, oh excuse me, 900 to 600 right so it depends a little bit and uh, it's very important that when you make your images a little bit smaller that you sharpen it a little bit and I like to, uh, well I can do a separate video with this but I like to give you a preview when I make my images a little bit smaller I use the unsharp mask uh, filter uh, to sharpen the image with a radius of 0.2 and the amount of 200 uh, percent I think it's uh, it's uh, the value so 200 percent I think all right, but this is uh, not the topic. Uh, here, here is a topic: image size. This is a, a command what I use very often, and another command what is maybe a little bit important are the adjustments. What wha what we like to do later is we like to bring the adjustments uh, on its own layer in a non-destructive way. When you choose image adjustments, you will change the pixels right on that layer, and this is something. Well, I don't like it. I mean, you can do this. But if you apply it, and if you like to change it, you are a little bit in trouble. So um, before you choose here the adjustments, maybe you have to learn first the adjustment layers. This is one of the topics in the next videos. And uh, it's, well, it's a little bit better because you do not change the pixels and it's, and it's non-destructive. Forget all the auto things here. Um, I never use this. I do not ch uh, change the canvas size or image rotation. This is something what I do not use very often. The, so most of the time, the adjustments, well, not so often, more the adjustment layers, but something what I use very often is the image size, nearly on every image before I publish it on the web. The next topic is the layer. Whoa, the layers, uh, are I think the most important thing in Photoshop and I have to handle that in a, in a, in a separate video because you can do so many great things. Um, it's very important uh, to use the adjustment layers. This is what I'm talking about. If you choose the adjustment layer, let's choose the same adjustment layer what we had before. Let's choose, where's the color balance? Here it is. And when you change something here, you can see it's on its own layer and you can change it whenever you like. and. This is more a non-destructive way, so before you go to image adjustments, choose new adjustment layer right here. There are also fill layers. I, I use layers a lot. I mean, this is Photoshop. Photoshop is working with layers. If you do not work with layers, I recommend to work with Lightroom or I don't know. But I will explain all the layer thing in a, in a separate video. I do not use often type or text. This is something maybe a little bit more interesting for designers. I don't use it very often, so I don't like to mention it here in this video. And the next one is select. Um, in select, what I use sometimes is um, feather, so to feather a edge, a selection. But you can also do that if you have a selection. You can right click in it and then you can choose here feather as well. So do you, you, you will not need um, here the commands. Also same with refine edge is a very, very interesting tool. Color range is something for it to extract a model from the background. And, uh, but for now you will not need it, all right? The most spectacular part here are the filters and we have many filters. And 
Whoa, the first time when I saw this, I was clicking on every single filter to figure out what this filter will do. Of course, I have my favorite filters, and this is something what I'm talking about, what I like to talk about right now. First of all, the smart filters. You can turn a layer into a smart object. That means when you apply a filter, you can change the settings of the filter whenever you like and you will get a mask. So smart filters is a very interesting topic. Of course, uh, I would do a separate video uh, for the smart filters as well. Then the next one is the unsharp mask filter is uh, behind the sharpen uh, command here. Um, this is perfect if you like to sharpen the image a little bit. And I already mentioned uh, how I sharp my images when uh, I made them a little bit smaller for the internet. You can see here 0.2 pixels and an amount of yeah, something around 200%. But only if you uh, make the image very small. In a big size image, I will not sharpen the image like this. Maybe then a little bit more like this. All right, so unsharp mask is very important for me. Also, the blur tool. Sometimes I use the I use the Gaussian blur, not to blur the image. There are a little, a few advanced techniques where you can also sharpen the image with the Gaussian blur tool. Um, but sometimes maybe I have to blur the background a little bit. So I think the Gaussian blur filter is one of the most popular filters. You have much more here, but the most important one is the Gaussian blur. And then I have also some very special filters like the high pass filter. The high pass filter is a very popular filter to sharpen the image to get more details. And I have uh, plugins here, what I bought. So I have Nick software, I have Topaz Labs. I don't use this. Um, I just tested it. And so Nick software and Topaz are my two favorite plugins, what I use all the time on maybe every image. And uh, yeah. 3D, I am not a 3D expert. Sometimes I play around a little bit with it. It depends a little bit on what version do you use. I mean, in the latest version, um, I think 3D is inside. Well, at the moment I'm working with uh, Photoshop CS6, but we are now at the moment where we switch to the next Photoshop version. So I cannot uh, talk about uh, much about 3D, but I don't use it because uh, I'm not a 3D expert. Well, it's sometimes it's very cool to play around. You can do many things. You can uh, um, convert maybe a layer into kind of a postcard, and uh, then you will get into your 3D options, and you can flip it around and much more. So, But this is something what I don't like so much, so let's switch back to our old um, workspace. And... Uh, View is a very interesting um, command here in the menu. Um, you can find here a, a few things like if you work with uh, guides, I think it's, no, not guides. Uh, how do you call it? I don't know. These lines here, what you have here. If you work with this, sometimes uh, I choose here snap to. Um, yeah, guides is the right word. So you can see I have the rulers inside. I don't need it so much, but I have it because, uh, yeah, it's not a big reason. I mean, if I do not have the rulers, I do not have a disadvantage, so I, I have it here. Because when, when the rulers are here, I think you can click on them and you can drag here out the, the guides. Okay, but uh, I don't spend too much time here in the view section. And uh, the window section is very interesting because right here are all the windows. You saw it in a previous video. And uh, you can also save your workspace here. And um, what I like to mention here is the application frame. I think this is very important for a Mac user because many Mac users have a view like this. I mean, it's great to work like this to see your background, but oh, I can do this. I mean, it, it looks not bad if you have a great background image here. Take a look. But um, when I retouch an image, I like to bring the focus here on my picture. So I choose Windows, and I have to click on that application frame. Or what you can do if you don't work with this, then you can press your F key, and then you have everything in the full screen mode, and then everything is fine. But I have here uh, turn on my application frame, and then I will not see my background. All right, this is uh, the most important thing about uh, the menu here. 
and of course of course all the tools all the commands what i told you uh, in this video i will explain it in a, in a separate video um, the first maybe three to five videos what you can f uh, find here in this project are very basic only for the overview and uh, i think in the next two or three videos we get started with a little bit more retouching with a little bit more practical application but um, yeah for now a uh, quick overview what commands I use very often all right this is it this is all about uh, the menu a quick overview and uh, in the next video we can go to the next topic all right guys this video was not a big deal and in this case I think it's enough to get 3,000 views for this video that uh, I will upload uh, the next one so share this video recommend it to your friends and uh, click as often as you can and if uh, this video will have 3,000 views, I will upload the next video. And uh, I try to do a little bit more practical ap application in the next video. I think about a video about brushes, how to use brushes. I think that's a very interesting topic. I'm uh, very open uh, to your suggestions if you have uh, any wishes, what you like to see. It's very important that everything stays basic at the beginning. And it's up to you how fast do we go. So uh, try to spread these videos, this project, and if we get the clicks, I will upload and upload tutorials. And of course, I will go a little bit more advanced in each tutorial. But the first four or five videos should be a little bit more basic. And uh, yeah, it's up to you. Thanks anyway for the big support and I appreciate every view, every share, whatever you can do. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.